ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dearly respected brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded mankind and the believers in particular to fulfill the trust that they are entrusted with and there is no doubt that throughout your life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you amana and trust which is obligatory on you as a Muslim to fulfill and this is one of the signs of a believer that we when he is entrusted with something he fulfills that trust and from the greatest of trust which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us with is our youth and our children. Our youth and our children, my dear brothers, they have rights over us. And the greatest of those rights is that we teach them to grow into proper practicing Muslims. This is the right of your child over you because Islam has set as a foundation the importance of the youth in Islam. And our youth cannot be guided and be upon the right path unless Allah wills unless it begins from home and when we look into the Quran and the Sunnah we find many examples that Allah Azza wa Jal has given regarding the youth many stories of the past regarding youth who were greater than many men today take ashabul kahf as an example the people of the cave who we are all familiar with their story they resorted to the cave and they slept for over 300 years with allah preserving their bodies and then they woke up and continued their lives. Allah protected them because they were protecting Allah's religion. They were saving themselves from corruption and fitna. This is the type of mind frame we need to instill in our children and our youth. That you need to protect yourself, especially in times like this 
from the fitna that is out there. And when Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the people of the cave, who He preserved for over 300 years, He said about them, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ فَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى Allah Azza wa Jal says, Verily they were a fitya. And the word fitya, my brothers, means a group of young men, young boys, who believed in their Lord and we increased them in guidance. So subhanAllah, think of this position where people were willing to flee to a cave because of the society they lived in was corrupt in order to protect their religion. What kind of mind frame is this? Doing whatever is necessary to preserve my Iman. This came from who? A group of young boys. Youth. Where are our youth today? What commitment are we making towards our youth and raising them upon Islam? And the examples, my dear brothers, are many. Take the father of the Prophet, Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Khalil, the close friend of Allah azza wa jal, as another example. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. We are all familiar that he in his life broke the statues that were being worshipped besides Allah and he done it at a time where his people were out of the city and he broke the statues and then he placed the hammer or the axe in the hand of the largest of them and then when the people came back they found their gods broken So they began discussing who done this to our statues. And Allah mentions this in the Quran. And regarding the conversation they had with themselves, as Allah is saying, He says, They said, Who has done this to our gods? Indeed, he is of the wrongdoers. Then they said, They said, We have heard a young man speaking about our gods. His name is Ibrahim. Once again, look at the position, my dear brothers. A person upon Tawheed alone in his city challenging shirk and annihilating it and who was he Ibrahim alayhi salam but when Ibrahim was taking this stance he was not an old man the people said it we remember a fata a young man who was speaking about our gods these are the examples my dear brothers and they are many which Allah gives throughout the Quran and the Sunnah why so that we can take it as an example a guideline in how we need to raise our youth many parents are very neglectful when it comes to their children they will put an extreme effort into his worldly affairs which is okay but it is not okay when the most important aspect of his life his deen is neglected what is the use my dear brothers if our children turn out to become doctors and engineers and scientists and whatever else if there is no foundation of Iman in their hearts 
What do you think this is going to benefit you as a Muslim, as a parent in the hereafter? On the contrary, it will only earn a punishment. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, You are all shepherds. And you will all be questioned over your flock. <coughs> My dear brothers, please place your mobile phones on silent or turn them off during the khutbah. May Allah reward you. So the youth in Islam is very significant. We need to rid ourselves of the mentality that the child is still young. No. Islam begins from when the child is born. This is our responsibility. And the Prophet ﷺ, to show us the merits and the virtues of our youth, when he mentioned that there are seven types of people who Allah shades beneath His shade on the Day of Judgment, on a day where there is no shade except His shade. And remember, my dear brothers, that day everyone is going to want the shade of Allah. Because we are not talking a 30 or a 40 or even a 50 degree day, which we witness today, we can't even handle it. We are speaking a day where the sun is a mile above the heads. And some people will be drowning in their sweat, as the Prophet ﷺ said. But a certain group of people, Allah gives them shade. One of them, he said, is the youth that grows up worshipping Allah. The youth that grows up worshipping Allah. Now you as a parent, what effort are you making in order for your child to achieve this? Are you raising your child on La ilaha illallah? Is your child going to be a gate or a ticket to paradise for you? Or is your child going to be a ticket to something else? We must not be neglectful of our youth. Because when the youth is upright, the ummah becomes upright. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سن بسنته وصار على نهجه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد. My dear brothers, there have been many youth throughout the history of Islam who took positions in the religion that not many are able to fulfill in their shoes. And when we speak about great youth in Islam, there is no doubt that from the greatest, if not the greatest amongst them, are the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we can speak on and on regarding their examples as youth and what they did for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commitments that they had towards the deen of Allah. But if we were to take one example, the example of the great Sahabi Mus'ab ibn Umayr, رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضاه. Many are familiar with his story. Where Mus'ab ibn Umayr was a young teenager. And he came from a very wealthy family. 
And uh, even though his family was very wealthy, they were rejecting the Prophet ﷺ. They were not accepting his religion, the religion of Allah. So Mus'ab ibn Umayr, as a young teenager, a young youth, he went in a different direction than his family. And he chose to follow the Prophet ﷺ. And his family threatened him. And they threatened to take away all the luxury that he had. And how much luxury did Mus'ab have? Anhu. It's narrated that his perfume could be smelt from a long distance. And he would wear the greatest of clothing. So Mus'ab ibn Umayr, because the iman, the belief had penetrated his heart, nothing could stop him. And he gave it all up for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. We're not talking an old man, my dear brothers. Youth, just like our children. Teenagers who will take these positions and stances. Until Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu was martyred in the battle of Uhud. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to weep. Because he passed away with a garment that could not cover his entire body. And this reminded the Prophet ﷺ of what this young man gave up for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we need to ask ourselves, what are we instilling in our children? Which direction are we leading them? Our children are our responsibility, my dear brothers. And the more effort you put into the youth, especially your children, the greater the reward is going to be for you in the long run. Because when you raise your child on deen, you are granted their obedience, which Allah commanded. But when you are neglectful of your child, it backfires. And you will raise a child who will be disrespectful to his parents. And we witness this many times. But most importantly, when you raise your child on deen, when you make that investment to raise your child on la ilaha illallah, when Allah Azza wa Jal puts you in your grave and that righteous child is making dua for you, your hasanat, your good deeds keep ticking over. And this is what matters at the end, my dear brothers. It is not your child's career, even though it's important. But it's not their career. It's not their physical strength. It's not the number of things they have in this world, which is going to allow your light in your grave to increase. It is the la ilaha illallah and the iman that you planted within them. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us a righteous offspring. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify the affairs of our children and our youth. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to raise us and our children on the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك ربنا قريب مجيب للدعوات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعم يزيدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون